for those of you that don't know what the 40 ball is, um, every community may have a different meaning, different interpretation, but in Detroit's urban community, it's when someone, typically men, offer women the bare minimum in exchange for something they are benefiting greatly from, which is oftentimes sex. The women who accept the $40 are most times using it to get, using it to get things like their hair done and their, their nails done or putting gas in their car. Nonetheless, nonetheless, the exchange is in no way of equal balance. At the beginning of the year, some of us start with resolutions or we start on fast and we're giving up stuff, right? Most times we're giving up stuff in um, to help us become healthier, right? Healthier physically, healthier spiritually. But nonetheless, the fast is um, to be able to hear God clearly so that what, what the, the mistakes we made last year, the things we did last year don't impact us this year, right? We want to be able to hear God clearly um, more sufficient this year so that he is leading us and guiding us, right? And so even though we might go on these fasts where uh, these Daniel fasts, um, where you ain't have, you're not eating anything but vegetables um, so you can hear God clearly, or you, you know, committing more physically so that you have the energy to uh, do what God is calling you to do. So you're in a gym, right? Um, you, you are committing to going to the gym often, you know, more daily, whatever that may be. I don't want to get to keep trying to go deep into that, but whatever it is, Satan, the enemy has been in the weight room consistently. (laughs) He is, he has consistently, he has, he has already made a habit of making sure that he is in the weight room. Bro is off protein shakes. <laughs> he is popping pills. He off steroids. He is he has been planning in advance how to appear much stronger than us, right? So that he can try to tempt us and get us off of course. But notice I said appear because he knows that he's not really stronger than us. But if he can trick us into thinking that. What he has is like heavier, heavier on us, going to be going to be harder for us to to handle or manage. Then that's how we can fall. Right. But but as children of God, uh, with 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 the Holy Spirit working in and through us, there's no battle. There's there's no battle that we can be defeated in. Right. When we are operating in the spirit. Proverbs chapter 27, verse seven says. A person who is full tramples on a honeycomb, but to a hungry person, any bitter thing is sweet. When we are starving, we are likely to eat anything, right? There are so many different passages as I was studying for this episode, so many different passages of people who are hungry, who are starving, and is about to settle for something and exchange their hunger for something that's minimal, right? One of those passages is Luke is in Luke chapter 15, the story of the prodigal son. And so the story is about this this uh boy, this man, this guy. He asks his father for his inheritance and he goes off. He takes his inheritance and he blows all the money. And so he's so broke that he goes to a farmer and asks him, Can he tend to his pigs? And so the farmer hires him to tend the pigs. And as he's tending the pigs, he's so hungry. He's so starving. He's down bad that he looking at pig food and it looks good to him. Right now, something we know dang on well, we don't eat. We like we would never have an appetite for it or desire for it. But all of a sudden now you're willing to settle for it because you're hungry, because you're starving. In Genesis chapter 25, in the story of Jacob and Esau, Esau sold his birthright for some bread and a bowl of stew because he was starving. His, he walked in the door, his brother cooking. He won't with his brother cooking. It smelled good. He hungry. And he exchanged his birthright. He gave his, his brother his birthright in exchange for a meal that was temporarily. 
he was going to get hungry again. He was going to need to eat again. That meal didn't last him a lifetime, but he was willing to give it up for a temporary moment of satisfaction. But Jesus shows us in Matthew chapter 4 that even when we're fasting and we're seeking God and like and, and we're hungry, right? We're, we're we're hungry. How to deal with the enemy when he comes trying to tempt us, right? So in Matthew chapter 4, we see the enemy, the first thing that Satan came with is say is saying he came for his identity. If you really are, if you really are who you say you are, if you really have the power that you say you have, then you can take the you can turn these stones and turn it into bread and you can eat. You should go ahead and turn these stones into bread and you and you can eat. But because Jesus was spiritually strong, because the spirit that was in him, his He's in a body of flesh and our flesh is weak, but because that spirit is, was, was in him, was, is in him and he's strong enough to be able to come against the enemy. He quoted scripture back. Yes. He, Jesus had the power to turn that bread into stone. That was the truth. But he also knew that we, we must not live on bread alone. So when the enemy came trying to come for what he's hungry for, what he's lacking and trying to offer him and say, you know, you can you can have what you lack, what you're lacking. He was like, nah, dog. And eventually, after all the different tempting and testing, Jesus was like, man, go on. We can we have that same power to be like, man, if you don't get out of my face, <laughs> if you don't go on with your foolishness, don't nobody got time for nothing. None of this that you're talking about. Right. All this rah, rah, rah. In Genesis chapter three, the first sign of temptation that we see, we see Satan coming to Eve, tempting her to eat fruit that God told her that she couldn't have. Right. But he was trying to get her to exchange a bite, something temporarily for something that was made. He made her think that she was like, like what she was getting in exchange was going to be so big was going to be so monumental and, and, and so major that she that he was trying to convince her that you eating is minimal, but you're about to get something, you know, or, or you obeying, you disobeying God is minimal in comparison, in comparison to what you're about to get in exchange. You're about to get something big, right? It's about to be major for you. But really, she was exchanging something big for something that was going to cause her great pain, right? Something that was really going to hurt her. So what the Holy Spirit was was downloading to me is how important it is for us to be in the weight room spiritually. Yes, it's important to be in great physical health and, you know, doing certain, you know, doing these things to try to Make sure we're healthier and, you know, like our bodies are healthier and we're giving up the things in our lives that aren't good for us. But most importantly, make sure that you are spiritually in the weight room consistently. Satan never, Satan never leaves the weight room. <laughs> he ne- he in that mug every day, multiple times a day. Us going, you know, us beginning to start right now, like, like deciding, Oh, right now, like this is something I want to do. We need to stay consistent. Don't just make it something that you do for 40 days or that you are going to do, you know, um, just because it's the beginning of the year. Stay consistent in growing in relationship with God and sitting at his feet and developing spiritually. Because if you know his word, first of all, Satan is going to come and give us, he's going to quote scripture back to us. But it's it's a because we have there has to be some truth in it. But there's a there's a part of it that's a lie. I had to um, process this for myself recently because this is a part of how he's attacking me. God speaks to me in my dreams, and then I know I further know that it's from him because he confirms it in scripture. And so what the enemy has been doing, even though I'm like, mm, God, but you said this, this, this opposes this, right? Because there's, 
his word says a whole lot of things for a whole lot of different circumstances. So if you don't know what is applying to you in this in this moment, then you will believe because Satan is conniving. You will believe that that was a dream from God and that scripture is what's attached to it. And that's what that's what it means. That's why you need to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit to know what he is saying to you and being clear on the season for you in this moment. Right. Um. So, yeah, this, that, that's one of the fights that I'm, I'm going through. And well, I, I was experiencing. Um, and I had to go back and because I, I so when I wake up, I write down my dreams and then I write down those scriptures because I'm like, OK, this is what you're saying to me right now. Um, but I had to go back and delete some stuff because I'm like this oppose. Not only does this oppose what you already told me, but I'm looking at the lie in this. I am looking at the lie in this dream that we automatically said in O two. <laughs> we said absolutely not to. Um, my little sisters have been teaching me, <laughs> they teach me, they, they keep me hip, right? So they were telling me about this, this, this new slogan that everybody's saying, standing on business, right? And before that, we were staying 10 toes down. So because I'm trying to stay hip with y'all, I know y'all, some of y'all still on, on social media, y'all still in the world. Y'all, y'all. Y'all may need an analogy <laughs> to help give y'all a little more understanding. So we need to stay 10 toes down on that firm foundation and really stand on business by peeping when the enemy is trying to come with something that's mediocre and tempting us to exchange something major for something small. That's really standing on business. If God is our firm foundation, that's really standing on business. <laughs> Jesus said that he is the bread of life. And he also said that he offers us living water. So we are never hungry and we are never thirsty when we're consuming what it is that he is offering. We got to start letting folks know that if the spirit of the Lord ain't present, then neither is our spirit. When opportunities, uh, job offers, places to be, whatever it may be, come to us. If we have the wisdom and discernment to know that the spirit of the Lord is not active in that, neither should our spirit be there either. We, sh we shouldn't part be in participation there, knowing that God's spirit is not, he, he see it now, he, he in the area, he can, he's seeing what's going on. But if his spirit isn't active, <laughs> isn't active in that situation, absolutely we back it on that big head because where god's spirit dwells there is liberty where the holy spirit dwells there is victory and there is power and you are full i love you all in real life